Gotham Knights Episode 4, where Castiel decides to go clothes shopping in a car. I don't see any pry marks. And the genius detectives ask the important questions. A lot of them have trace amounts of an unknown substance. What does that mean? We've even got a base granny telling us what she thinks of Gotham Knights herself. Got what they deserved. Just like you. No, at this point, I don't know whether the writing's getting worse or I'm slowly losing my mind, but let's find out together. We start with a guy running through a forest, being haunted by a noise that resembles the average ex-wife. No wonder he's panicking. They could have all of us! I think he means the divorce courts. Either way, this guy is in absolute agony. Everyone's freaking out around him because they can't see whatever he can see. A policeman comes up. He's like, calm down, mate. Gotham's bad enough. We don't need me on the news. But the guy's still hallucinating, steals the cop's gun, and takes the fastest, easiest road out of a CW series, probably saving his career. Do you remember in Total Recall where the psychologist tried to talk Arnold Schwarzenegger into doing it to himself? Well, if it's Gotham Knights, it turns out they don't need much convincing. In fact, it's all over in the intro sequence. They're so desperate to leave, they don't even make it to the title sequence. We start with Victoria Alonso from Marvel skating round the school. <laughs> Uses a scooter to travel around the expansive indoor office space. Oh, my bad. It was actually the Joker's daughter. They all look the same to me. But the gang have been looking through the old case files of his grandfather, and the man of the group has gone to the teacher's lounge and stolen their cake. Because nothing is more masculine than a flowery cake. I'd also like to point out that there are very clearly forks used for cutting a cake right next to the cake. Good luck trying to solve Bruce Wayne's murder by investigating the alleged killing of his great-great-grandfather. Every episode, we recap the story of the last episode, because we just assume you haven't seen that, because if you did, you wouldn't be watching this one. And this is the fourth episode now, and we're still doing it, despite the fact that this is available on streaming services, and so you can watch them whenever you want. In the age of streaming, no one is watching episode four before episode one. You can stop doing this tactic from the 90s. Slice, anyone? Slice? There are so many jokes. There are so many jokes. But this time, I'm gonna make like a football referee. Either way, he decides to cut off a piece of his cake and gets the assassin's knife to do it. Now, this assassin's throw knife will presumably piss off Shad if we've got extra points on the end, just to add in more friction and make it more difficult to enter a target. But don't worry, this assassin doesn't seem to use daggers which are based on actually doing damage to something. No, it's just a plot point. Now, he does decide to use the assassin's dagger to cut his cake, which is about to eat. Most people would think this was a problem. But Gotham Knights has never been full of sane people. You do realize the Talon almost killed you with that thing, right? It's not almost killing him which is the issue. He's definitely killed other people with it. Yeah, now I'm repurposing it for good. So, so what? Now you've got other people's brain matter in your birthday cake? That center layer is supposed to be strawberry jam, not people. Running it under the tap for a bit won't do it, mate. Okay. Oh, we're just gonna accept it. Yeah, this gang is disgusting. But Bruce Wayne's son complains, I've been through this hundred year old report a thousand times and found absolutely nothing. Who would have thought after a hundred years that clues would have gone cold? And that if every other person who's ever lived, including Batman, couldn't find anything, then you're definitely not going to be able to. At this point, I'm surprised you can work out how to open a fridge. Beep, beep. Coming through. I think that was Victoria Alonso, though. I can't tell. She was too fast. Do you think the Marvel executive will get fired for appearing in a DC show? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. Maybe that's why she was in the DC show after all. It's all right, love. I'm not going to knock you for taking a payday. But if there's one thing you can rely on the Gotham Knights for, it's their interesting conversation and witty repartee. You find anything interesting? Maybe. Maybe it's nothing. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up, love. You are just a font of useful information. Remember, this is someone who later in the episode gets called a genius. Maybe it's interesting, maybe it isn't. I'm not quite sure yet, love. IQ tests aren't what they used to be. But his grandfather had various marks left all over him and nobody knows what did the damage. Pretty sure falling down a sewer doesn't cause marks like that. And as you can see, the intelligence definitely runs in the family. You seem tired. I am tired. Tired of showering. I'm tired of worrying about whether I'm going to end up dead or in prison. I think he's just realized he's acting in a CW show and what he's going to do to his career. At this point, I'd rather fall down a sewer than say another line. And I'm tired of losing everybody that ever gave a damn about me. You've only lost one, mate. You lost Batman. As far as you know, you've still got Cressida, you've got the blonde, and you actually inherited everybody in this room and Robin. And I mean, look, they may not be worth much, but numerically, this is definitely a net positive. Batman dying may be the best thing that ever happened to you if that's what you actually care about. And I'm tired of your constant bitching. Once again, Joker's daughter the voice of the audience. I want my life back. Unfortunately, it's too late for that. You did sign a CW contract and they will hold you to it. But we're about to see this group's incredible detective skills. They find his yearbook, walk over to see it, push the cake as they do it because they're incredibly clumsy, and knock the knife off the table, which falls in the floor, and leaves the mark on his body in the wood. That's right, this incredible group of literal geniuses where one of them is the son of the greatest detective who ever lived, discovered every single clue in this entire chain of events 
by a random chance, which makes a comment later in the episode just seem farcical at this point. Your detective work to this point has been impressive. Yeah, love, there's nothing impressive about random chance. Unless you work at the CW, where you seem to have just looked your way into a career. For the rest of us, merit is actually important, and there's no merit involved in this at all. Guys. <laughs> Guys, you will never believe what happened, because this is farcical. We cut over to the news to talk about Harvey Dent taking down the things in the last episode, because, you know, we've got to remind you of the previous story, as you haven't seen that, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this. It hasn't forgotten DA Harvey Dent's heroic takedown of the mutant gang. Although the audience has, because the moment you finish watching this show, it's like Men in Black came in and flashed you. No, not like that. Will Smith wouldn't do that. That's his wife. But we found out there's a new candidate running against Castiel. It's the blonde's boyfriend's father, this is getting quite complicated, who, let's face it, is almost certainly a member of the Court of Owls. So he goes on the news and just starts ripping Castiel a new one. Just another two-faced politician. Oh, did you see what they did there? It's two-faced, everybody! I have no idea why they're so proud that he's going to be two-faced, but they put it in all their marketing, keep screaming about it at every point, and then basically just tell you about it in the show. I'm not sure something's an Easter egg when they get a sledgehammer and start smashing you in the face with it. Is it really an Easter egg hunt if someone's waving it in the air going, I've got an Easter egg for you, mate? These are the philosophical questions of the modern age. Either way, he wakes up, Detective walks into the room, but as he stands, a key falls out of his jacket. What is it? It's not my key. I mean, to me, that would have been a bigger issue. Where on earth has this come from? And why did I get it when I'm just sleeping on a sofa? Castiel, though, nah, it's normal. I have blackouts all the time where I can't remember what I've done. I'm just glad it was a random key in my pocket and not a new wife. Guess you did have an interesting night. You can say that again. Because, you know, one night stands are renowned for giving you a spare key. I'm sure that's definitely what happened. Well, if you're looking for a connection between the Court of Owls and Alan Wayne's death, I think X marks the spot. It's good to know that this genius is providing the same level of quality content as she does every episode. In fact, the smartest thing about her is that she set the quality bar really low and just didn't have high to reach every week. Oh, little Miss Wirecutter's got jokes. At least no, she's not talking about me, because what I say aren't jokes. They're more like my brain's desperate ability to try and survive this. It's a reflex at this point. But Robin comes up with an incredible theory. If an assassin used to use it 100 years ago, and one's using it now, maybe it was used in the meantime. Yeah, we're really putting that brain cell to use this week. Especially when she comes up with this conclusion. And if it was used on us and Alan Wayne, then maybe it was used on others? An assassin might have used his weapons to kill other people? <gasps> How on earth did you come to that conclusion? I thought you were the only person he ever will have targeted. Is that crazy? Is an assassin killing more than one person in his entire life crazy? Robin, you didn't really pick up much from Batman, did you? My dad said that he suspected the court had been responsible for decades worth of murders. I mean, I gathered that from the previous week when you said he's been killing the Waynes for centuries. But it's good to know you're spelling it out for the mouth breathers at the back. I kinda wonder if there are more accidents like dead bodies with strange scars out there. That's literally just what Robin and then Turner said. Why have you repeated the same line three times from three different people? But they come up with a plan. The way we can find out whether this assassin has been killing people is by finding autopsy records for the last 100 years. Because if a load of people have been dying for centuries by what looks like Philip screwdrivers, nobody will have noticed that. That's that's above reproach. Especially given the sheer amount of people that the Course of Owls have killed in their time. No one will have noticed that, I'm sure. But they come up with a plan. We're gonna have to infiltrate the police and only one person can do that. The same one from last week who went in there and did absolutely nothing for the entire week. And we're gonna do it again. Yes, this is the second week where his main storyline is, I'm going to cosplay a policeman. It didn't make any sense last week, let's see if they do a better job this time. So the hacker, who the only time she's ever hacked anything, she got caught, comes up with a USB, and unlike when she does it, when the USB hacks the police, then they won't detect it this time, we promise. Just one. It's called a rubber ducky. Of course it is. You get the male computer hackers from the Matrix called Neo and Morpheus, and then the women come along with their rubber duckies. So he turns up with a fake moustache to give this guy his coffee, even though he doesn't need anything at his department. To the bean facade. You're learning, Rook. You're learning, Rook. I have 500 of these a day. I can't stop twitching. What can I do you for? Just returning this to records. Get to it, son. Why are you talking to me, you fool? You know this in the records department. This is like me going to the library and asking them to change the tires on my car. Unfortunately, he does smash into Castiel and make him drop all of his papers. For some reason, this is meant to be a big deal. I don't know why. Castiel isn't going to know every single cop. Are there? The thing is, Castiel doesn't care about this at all. It's the man acting, which is weird. Me and the boys appreciate everything that you're doing for the city. That's never been said in the history of the universe. Yeah, you know, me and the boys, we appreciate everything because I speak for all men in this entire department. Obviously, that's how that works. The only time I think anyone has ever used me and the boys would be in the boys. Either way, apparently that was a big deal and he walks into the records department. Not the server room anyway. Heading to the server room, which is more like a server closet. Stop it. Stop it, everybody. St 
Stop it. Stop it. Just because a joke writes itself doesn't mean we've got to say it out loud. There's about 900 different jokes here. Just pick one and tell it to yourself. It'll be fine. But he gets his rubber ducky, puts it into the server, and that's it. This entire storyline was completely pointless. We literally could have had him walked into the room going, I've done it. For some reason, he had to be in the police station again. I don't know why. It was pointless the first time, pointless this time. But at least we got to spend time in the closet. Got remote access. I don't know why she's so surprised. I've got remote access. I thought you were supposed to be a cool computer hacker. Why are you surprised that it actually worked? So she searched through the records and she gets a huge list of everyone the assassin has killed over time. For some reason, no policeman has ever noticed in his entire history of working there. GCPD really not sending their best, are they? Looks like Dad was right. You mean Batman, the greatest detective of all time, actually was right in his deductions? I can't believe that. I mean, you worked it out. But Batman working it out, you're stretching reality too far there. But say the police never notice them because the cases span decades across multiple jurisdictions. And I'm like, yeah, but they are all in Gotham. And if someone went around talking about the Phillips screwdriver killer, you would have thought that somebody else will have noticed. But apparently, no, the court of owls can off hundreds of very important people like mayors nobody notices because you know that was that was like down the street or something but they find a body that turned up just two weeks ago turns out that the guy at the start of the episode was actually bruce wayne's lawyer witnesses say he was suffering from paranoid delusions or some form of psychotic break sound familiar ezra miller the mad goose wizard if anyone in the episode says that i'm leaving so they get together and plan to break into the lawyer's house because if you're gonna break into anyone's house a lawyer is definitely who you want to piss off you think you can give me a crash course in lock picking or you can just bring her with her considering she can already pick locks seems like the sensible solution she's a thief i'm coming with you why are you coming with him? You can't pick locks. You can't even defuse a bomb. You just cut wires at random and then are surprised when people are pissed off at you. Your idea of picking a lock will be lobbing a brick through the window and no one will notice, I'm sure. Gotten you in enough trouble already. Maybe see what you can find out about our mystery knife. That was definitely palmed off by him, actually. I'm pretty proud of him. No, I don't want to be in your company any more than I physically have to already. Can you just go over there and do something, please? In that case, I'm team breaking and entering. If you're going to go anyway, why didn't you just offer when he said, could you pick a lock for me? Easier for me to pick the lock than teach you how. Exactly. Why has it taken this long to explain it? It's like these characters' brains are running on daylight saving times and they're an hour behind everybody else. So while they go off to the lawyer's house, the rest of the gang try and find out what it is about these knives. And for that, they go off to ask an expert. Because as I'm sure you can tell from this knife, it's obviously a very unique thing, which absolutely isn't just a standard throwing knife with an extra bit of metal added onto it, which actually makes it worse. Although Joker's daughter is still nailing the creepy faces. This time we've got creepy eyes and creepy smiles. She's actually improving every week. So Batboy and Bomb Girl break into the lawyer's house. Rich people can always afford the toughest locks. You do realize locks aren't really that expensive. You know, the only people that can afford a lock on their door? Capitalists! You could have done anything for this. You could have said armed security. It would have made a lot more sense. Instead, you're choosing a lock. Be glad I came along instead of your girlfriend. Don't worry, love. I am. Although why Batboy did it is a little bit surprising. Just seems like you two are a lot alike. You're both literal geniuses. Of course they are. <laughs> oh, you're both absolutely amazing. You are the bestest ever. The keys to everything. You're literal geniuses. Not even figurative geniuses. No, there is absolutely no doubt that compared to everyone else on Earth, you two are a step above. That must be why they're so highly successful. One hacked into a bank and got immediately caught. And the other one is barely able to pick a lock, which is her speciality. Incredibly stubborn. Thought you were supposed to be complimenting her, mate, not calling her a cow. You're a smart ass and stubborn. At this point, she's going to give you a slap. If I just had a celebrity dad and a multi-million dollar trust fund, we could be twinsies. I mean, you are a thief. Have you ever considered being better at that? You might actually take something worthwhile. I don't know. I just think if you're a literal genius, you might be smart enough to make as much money as a quiz show host. It really sounds like your fault, love. But she eventually cracks the lock. We get this smug face of, ha ha, see, I can pick a lock. It's like, yeah, that's the only reason you're here. You shouldn't be smug at doing something that you're already supposed to be good at. That's why I don't go around bragging that my heart is still beating. That's what I expect it to do. For a while, anyway. At this point, the three stooges go through the library and they find a new yearbook. It features murderers over time, and this guy had a circus act where he would throw knives at a spinning board with a woman on it. At least I hope it was a circus act, because the way things are going, that might just be Saturday Night TV in five years. The thing is, in his spare time, he roamed the streets of Gotham just offing people that he found. As the Joker says, he used to mix business with pleasure. Those look exactly like the knives of Talon used. No one has ever noticed this for the past 100 years. No policeman, no investigator, Batman. No, the only person out of this entire city which has ever realized it is the Joker's daughter. Yes, thank you. And she's very proud of it. The issue is this guy got caught and hung in the city square. And so who's doing it now? Maybe he hits one of his ancestors. We've got to go and talk to his daughter. She'll know. Or at least that's the track most people would take. They track down the person. The smart Alex of this group, though, have a different plan. How did the talent get a hold of knives belonging to a serial killer who's been dead for almost 100 years? That's it, dude. Focus on the knives because it's the knives which is the really important part of this story. Not the person using the knives. No, it's definitely the tool. 
That's as much as I care about this plot point as well. Thank you, Joker. And so we get introduced to his daughter, who's in an old people's home, and they go to visit. Goes by Eunice Monroe now. She changed Harmon, but stuck with Eunice. Are you really going to start commenting about people who change things they don't like about themselves? Really? Eunice is just out here living her best life. Leave her alone. Currently resides at the Robinson Park Nursing Home. Americans call them nursing homes. We call them old people's homes. We are not the same. <laughs> back with Batboy, and it seems like they've uncovered Rings of Power's Lord of the Rings book set. They went back to the books, back to the books, back to the books, and treated the entire series with care. Looks like someone had a similar idea. I think we were planning on being a little more subtle. Yeah, when we were going to destroy the DC universe, we were going to be slightly more subtle about it. Destruction is destruction, though, let's be honest. Uh oh, the audience found them. Because it turns out they've got caught. Someone else has come in to burgle the house too. Now this is actually the lawyer's son. He recognizes him as Batman's son. They talk about his father's last moments. He went insane. He just trashed the place. Whoever killed my father was responsible for your dad's death too. Yes, it's that time again. We're just going to repeat the plot that the audience already knows back at the guy in front of us, just in case everyone's forgotten. The Court of Owls. Dun dun dun. Although things get stranger when it turns out the lawyer knew about the Court of Owls as well. I think he went a little bit over the top, though. He could have just put it on some paper if he had any. Oh, yeah, sorry. He couldn't have used any of that because he'd put it on the floor. And, you know, the floor is lava or something, I guess. Even destroyed a desk for it. Luckily, though, wrote it the right way up for the camera, which is upside down to the rest of the room, which means he would have had to have stood there and written it upside down for us to have seen this. But it is nice that he had the audience in mind when he did it. With that, we jump back to Castiel. Anything new on the mayor's death? Newton gang could have used the gala as a distraction to plant a bomb in the mayor's car. And why would they do that exactly? Have you even thought that through? you are supposed to be a detective. The mutant gang break into a gala where you are and threaten to blow you up with a bomb. While they've got you hostage, they can break into your car and plant an identical bomb in your car that later kills you, when they could have just done you in at the gala where they already had you hostage. What is this, a game of mousetrap or something? They had a gun to his face at one point. That guy was two millimeters away from death. What is your story? And why do you not look convinced? If you are convinced by that, Castiel, you are actually mentally deficient. Close the door. I hope you're about to fire him because anyone that asks that question should not remain a detective. It turns out, no, he's got to close the door because she found a Court of Owls coin in the limo. As you know, any top secret society should always go around leaving proof that they exist. That's just common sense. It's the same type of coin that was found on Bruce Wayne's body. You think the murders are connected? Can you please have an IQ above five just for once in this series? So Bruce Wayne was killed and we found this incredibly rare ancient coin which is linked to a top secret organization in the city that we all know about but never talk about for some reason. And then another guy is also murdered with the same coin. Do you think they're linked? No, those coins, they're all over the place. You're supposed to be a detective, not Scully from X-Files. It's not your job to not believe everything in front of you. But we continue our exposition. Two days before the lawyer was killed, Bruce Wayne came and changed his will. Whatever's in that will is probably what got Bruce Wayne murdered. And we find out that the lawyer got killed because he was contacting the police, specifically the policeman that betrayed them in the first episode, because everything's linked and there's only about five characters in this entire show. And so they likely killed him to shut him up, talking about the will. Do you know what changes they did make to the will? No, your father took the only copy. Why is there only one copy of your will? Wills aren't supposed to be top secret information. They're actually information that you're meant to give out on your death. At the very least, the lawyer should be keeping a copy of it so that he can hand it out on your death. But no, no, this is the 1900s. I mean, they write things down one piece of paper at a time. But as he was leaving, I heard my dad tell him that what he was doing, that he was about to become the greatest man in the history of Gotham. He was literally Batman. He already was the greatest man in the history of Gotham. Who else? Look, Batman, I know you've taken down all of those criminals and saved us countless times from death, but nothing will make you a greater man than the stuff in that will that I wrote down. Because true greatness requires a lawyer. I think whatever was in that will got both our fathers killed. Well, hopefully the Gotham Knights find it because it couldn't happen to a nicer group of people. So he goes back to the team and says, look, if we find my dad's will, it'll prove that he wasn't going to cut me out of it. And then I have no motive to kill him, which means I have no motive to hire you. And if all of us can go free, this is the end of the series, folks. The issue is he has no idea where the copy of that will will be because she's basically female Alfred. Oh, we don't know what happened to Alfred. Alfred, but Bruce will definitely have trusted her with his will, because he trusted her with everything, like the location of his Batcave that she didn't know about at all. You really didn't think this through, did you? What makes you think she's not going to call the cops? She's the closest thing to family I have left. Yeah, so what makes you think she's not going to phone the cops? That just means she's been around you for longer than anybody else. That makes her more likely to phone the police. I've only spent four episodes with you. I'd hand you in without a second thought. But no, the reason he trusts her is because he smashed up his dad's car and then she took the blame. That makes her like family to me. No, that makes you a thug and her an idiot. If anything, taking the blame once will just make her realize you're not worth it, mate. 
It's your mess, you can deal with it. She's always looked out for me. Apart from the fact that she works for the Court of Owls, you mean, right. It's a risk. I know, which is why I'm going alone. Could you take the blonde with you just for luck? It's all right, love, you go first. It'll be fine, I promise. <laughs> but if you've ever wondered what it's like to stare into the gaping maw of hell, We've certainly got it for you now. You see, Robin is off to the old folks' home in order to ask the daughter about the knives. And she's not going alone. I am going with her. We had a Barbie trailer yesterday. That was bad enough. I wasn't really expecting a rerun in Gotham Knights. What? You know, Eunice and I happen to have a lot in common. What, you both look like you're about to star in a Jerry Springer special? Okay, both daughters of serial killers? I guess that's close enough. Dad issues. Dad, 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 Dad issues. Dad issues. It's a questionable choices. So, off to the nursing home we go. They sign in, and Castiel gets confronted by the blonde's boyfriend's father, who definitely isn't a member of the Court of Owls. Is it true that Bruce Wayne and Mayor Hill both received antique coins before they were killed? Because I got one too. And that's 100% legit, I'm sure it is. It's definitely not to try and find out what he knows. I mean, at this point, it's so obvious that he's a member of the Court of Owls, I'm actually doubting myself as to whether the writers could be that bad as to make it so obvious, while trying to pretend that it isn't. So I'm in a strange place where the most intelligent part of their story would be if this is actually correct and he genuinely isn't part of them. We'll have to wait until a future episode to find out whether that's actually right or not. Am I in danger? You specifically? No. Your career after being in this show? Possibly. Put it this way, it's probably not something you're gonna brag about at parties. So we get this scene, and it's bizarre. They talk to her and she's acting as if her father is still alive, because she says he keeps giving her these gifts all the time, talking in the present tense. But Granny doesn't want to talk, it's a secret, and so the Joker engages in master manipulative tactics in order to get the truth out of her. Well, we love secrets. And we know just how to keep them. A pinky promise. At this point, my only theory is that CW is literally trying to see how far they can push the bar before DC comes along and goes, no, we're having enough, mate. If you're not going to try, we're not going to give you the license. But apparently, that day is not today. But the Stooges keep multiplying. They're breeding, and Computer Hacker has a new theory. One that doesn't make any sense. The Talon's knives released with some kind of toxin. <gasps> That's actually a big deal. You know why? Because the guy sitting in the chair ate a cake with that blade. I cut my food with that knife. It's poisoned. I need immediate medical attention. That should be the next line out of his mouth. This guy should be panicking. A hallucinogenic, maybe. None of the cuts were deep enough to kill. Uh-oh. He's put his book down. I think he's realizing it's about to be mentioned any time right now, surely. Maybe he dipped them in something that made his victims lose their minds. That is scary. This guy must be panicking out of his mind. Quick, to the hospital. I buy it. My dad's an alcoholic. I'm sorry, she's just told you you've swallowed a hallucinogenic which is going to kill you, and you're like, but daddy issues. Daddy, 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 daddy. daddy Please tell me how your dad has anything to do with you being about to die. When he drank, he just became a different person. And this has nothing to do with you being about to die. <laughs> he wasn't great to begin with, but... That's the story, folks! And you're thinking, oh, maybe he'll say it later. Maybe he'll realize later. No, at no point does this guy realize that when someone's going, by the way, this knife is deadly and it's got a toxin on it that kills people, at no point does he realize, oh yeah, I, that, that's actually in me now. Uh, yeah, I did cut my food with that. That's a big deal. This show is so stupid, it doesn't even remember its own plot points. You think, oh, they're actually being clever. They set that up. They cut the cake with this knife. That's going to be a big No, 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 we forgot about that, didn't we? So they continue to talk about daddy issues rather than the fact that I need to go to A&E. I need an ambulance. We should check if the autopsy has showed any strange chemicals or... Go to hospital! So the granny starts talking about when she was a kid as well, you know. He was part of the circus, but he also took it out on people in the street later on. I don't know what's going on in this show. I so rarely saw Papa, but he knows how much I love the music. Daddy issues! And even though he was traveling with his app, he managed to watch over me. He still does. Oh, he's still alive, but she's in a nursing home. Is she just hallucinating as well? Is it dementia? Is she about to fall down a sewer? And he sends me music boxes to add to my collection. Oh yeah, that's a plot point. Everybody Everybody, zoom in on this, it's really important. But that knife where we used to cut the cake, we're gonna forget about that. So they start asking her, do you remember anything about the knives? You know, the ones he used to do horrible things to people with. And then she turns. Excuse me? That is the horrified look of someone who's just realized what show they're in. Oh, I've got to put up with you disgusting peasants, do I? And her entire persona changes. Suddenly, she knows all about the Court of Owls, and she knows everything that her dad did. And she loves it. She's very proud. In fact, she's also going for the Joker's crazy eyes and smile. Maybe it's age, maybe it's Maybelline, but either way, she's actually turned out to be a better actress than everybody else in the show, except probably the Joker's daughter. That's absurd. You can scream perfectly well without a tongue. <laughs> yes, yes. I'd be leaving now. Bye! Bye! I don't want any of your Werther's originals. They're probably covered in the same toxin. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
I'm not surprised that Joker's daughter finds that absolutely hilarious. No, it was their insipid pleas to spare their lives he couldn't tolerate. What can I say? The voice of the audience can come from the most surprising of places. Got what they deserved. Just like you. Based economy. Gotta say, favourite part of the show, absolutely loved Granny. Hey, Gotham Knights, you'll get what you're pissing deserve. <laughs> so they panic and run out of the room. Papa will be quite displeased with you. Yeah, that's it, love. Set your dad on him, that'll do it. <laughs> For tricking me into saying things I shouldn't. These are basically the faces of everybody watching this thing play out. <laughs> what on earth are you doing, CW? How did you watch this show back and think, yep, they'll love that? <laughs> So they run out of the room. Meanwhile, she's behind him, wheeling herself after him, shouting the Court of Owls poem. If anyone needs their own show, it should be Granny. Just have a take over this entire thing. I want to see her roam the streets of Gotham taking revenge. Let's have a wheelchair round Granny Batwoman. Except she's completely evil and fights like John Wick for the Court of Owls. It'll be awesome. I see you've come to save my daughter. No, shut your face. I'd watch it. So they run out and take the visitor's book where everyone puts their name. Or they'll send a talent! For your head! We can only hope, Granny, because that would definitely be the best ending to this series. To Wayne Mansion, and Cressida is about to have an awkward visitor. Oh, Cressida, I need you. I need you to tell me everything about this gang, which you're definitely not a part of. We even get a hug between them. Oh, I really care about you. Oh, I'm hugging you with my eyes open. That's how you know I'm evil. What I most like about CW shows is their subtlety and depth. Do you want to see a town called Malice on Sunday, April 16th? No, nor do I. How did you get in here? It is his house. He's got a key, love. Presumably, he just walked in through the front door. It's not as if the police are going to be watching it. I've been sneaking in and out of here since I was nine. Why were you sneaking into the house at nine? How can a nine-year-old sneak into Wayne Mansion? Are you telling me that Wayne Manor is so insecure that Batman's house has such terrible security that a nine-year-old can break in? Why I'm asking that? This is a CW. Of course their security a nine-year-old could break. It's the same with everything. We had to load a homeless nut jobs break into Wayne Tower at the start. Why am I expecting better security here? Wayne Tower's security got defeated by a mop. I've missed this place. Have you considered a missile? Because that's got a larger AOE you're far less likely to miss. Are you alright? As alright as someone wanted for murder can be. And someone acting in CW TV series. None of us are alright in a CW. We're just trying to survive to the end of our contract and maintaining as much of our dignity as possible. Do you have any idea how worried I've been? No, love, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. And so we get a bit of story, but the story doesn't make sense with what is immediately about to follow the story. This is a very weird scene. Well, I thought maybe you believed what they said about me was true. Mate, everything I've said about you is true. I know you. You loved your father. I know you'd never do anything to hurt him. Well, that and the fact that you work for the Court of Owls and so know that you were the one that said him up. That helps. The thing is, at this point, she's lying to him. She's maintaining a facade. I just have no idea why. Because at that point, we jump to another scene. But when we go back, there's been absolutely no point to her lying to him at all. Oh, that might be the worst blink I've ever caught somebody in. What on earth is happening here? Oh, but you've saved that for thumbnails. Of course I have. Don't judge me. It's not deliberate. It just happens. A lot of them have trace amounts of an unknown substance. What does that mean? There is no way you ask that question seriously. Hello, I have the brain power of an amoeba. What do you think that an unknown substance is? I kind of think the clue is in the pissing name. Oh, we're all geniuses in this crew. You're both literal geniuses. Or at least the ones without dangly bits are, apparently. Wait, but no, this is just a very shallow plot point for her to continue talking about her daddy issues. Let's just all be glad that we can edit it out here, whereas they didn't in the show. I watch a lot of true crime. It's a questionable choices. And he's like, oh, it's okay if you've got daddy issues. I do as well. I know exactly what it's like. She's like, yes, I had a terrible father as well. Sorry, I got it wrong. My rant was actually incorrect. This is mommy issues this time. It's good to know that the CW is equal opportunity and all parents are crap. Still feels like projection from the writers though, doesn't it? Also with her family dynamic, I bet it'll be something like, well, I was just taking them to cope with your father. All roads lead to bigotry. You don't want to go home? Not until she's passed out. Is there any chance we could do that to the characters in the show and just have 40 minutes of them unconscious? Because weirdly, I think the same amount of action would happen in that as a normal episode. Nobody knows, not even Turner. Well, I mean, if Turner hasn't worked out with his massive intellect, nobody else will. So we go to Castiel, who's trying to check out the evidence of the coin from the death in episode one, and he finds the coin is already gone. Apparently, he's taken that out of evidence, even though he hasn't. I don't know. It's almost like there's a second one of him going around doing weird things. Where do you think they've got the inspiration for the Fight Club? Fight Club. Unlike anything in this show, the mysteries of these scriptwriters are very easily solved. You already checked it out. What do you mean? What do you mean when somebody tells you that you've already checked something out? There's a lot of needless questioning for very obvious language in this episode. I don't know why. Also, this computer system seems to be based off Windows 95, judging by the UI. 
No, I'm telling you, she had that crazy old woman strength. That's not a thing. I don't know, I think it might be when you're comparing a generation that was brought up on meat to Zoomers. <laughs> How's that soy rice doing for you now? <laughs> but they're amazed. Why does she think her dad's alive? She thinks he's giving her presents? Is the Court of Owls faking giving her presents? That'd be weird. Meanwhile, Robin and her massive brain, which is unusual because she's incredibly tiny, has found out that Cressida has been bringing her these gifts and for some reason decided to write her real name in the book. Bearing in mind that these names are never checked and so she could have written Mickey Mouse down and it wouldn't have mattered. Instead, she's left a paper trail to her top secret organization that nobody's allowed to know or talk about. Smart. Meanwhile, Cressida is pumping him for information, and this is a CW show, so we probably should be glad that that's the only thing she's pumping him for, and he's telling her all about Batman's will. And so she leaves. Do you remember in the previous time we are in this scene, where she's all like, oh, I know you would never hurt Bruce Wayne? Well, it turns out all of that lying was completely pointless in about 30 seconds, because he gets a phone call, although when you find out it was them calling, he probably wishes he hadn't answered it. Turner, you need to get out of there right now. Cressida is one of them. She's working with the Court of Owls. That's why you don't go around putting your real name in books which tie you to an assassin. Just a little tip there for anyone who isn't an absolute pantry. That's impossible. Oh yeah, it turns out it's not impossible. In fact, in fact, the entire time she was pretending to be on your good side, there was no reason for her to. She could have just left. Oh, I'm sorry, Turner. I just need to go to the bathroom and it all would have been over. Your detective work to this point has been impressive. How? Somebody explain to me because his detective work up until this point has been accidentally knocking a knife off a table. I'm not sure you can call it great detective work when not only was it accidental, but not one of your teammates has got poisoned by a hallucinogenic dagger that he doesn't even realize he's done yet. I'm the greatest detective who's ever lived. As judged by the Teletubbies. Your father would be proud. No, if he was still alive, he'd be looking at that hole in the window going, you know, I was probably better off down there. After having seen what you turn into when I'm gone. This is my tense face. This is my shocked, angry face. That's supposed to be the same expression. It definitely isn't. Oh no! I'm pretty sure that she's not even aiming anywhere near him. He's more like over there. <laughs> and you're like oh, aiming over here somewhere. I'm sorry it had to come to this. I'm only going to be sorry if you don't pull the trigger. I'm so trying so hard to act. I've opened my eyes and everything. What was that? He drops the phone a long way away from it. You know what you do? Walk backwards! Oh, you've dropped the phone. I'm definitely not standing near you then. But instead, we get whatever this is supposed to be. I don't know whether he was trying to grab the gun or go ballroom dancing. And it was all done very speedily with some of the stuff outside the realm of the camera. Because I guarantee you, if you'd seen all of it at a proper speed, it wouldn't have looked very good. But it's okay now because he's got the weapon and his acting face. I trusted you. So did my dad. Look, dude, you chose your own agents. It's your fault at this point. Have you been working for them the whole time? I can't believe you're working for the CW too. Please, I never meant for any of this to happen. I just kind of fell into it. I didn't have any work for a few months and then they offered me the job and I take it. You can't blame me for my choices. I have bills to pay. Did you kill my father? You have to understand. That's not a no. <laughs> In this situation, just go no. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Yeah, Talon did it. It was Talon. One does not defy the court. The family court. Many a good man have been crushed. <laughs> They're too powerful. They're everywhere. Did you do it? Did you kill my father? I did not kill him. You're lying. I didn't. What was the point of asking if you're not going to believe her when she answers anyway? Did you kill him? No. You're lying. So why ask? If we're not going to believe people, just shut up about it. I helped the court. It's not the smartest thing to say in this situation. You do realize that. But she continues. She admits that actually, oh, well, I didn't do it myself exactly. I fed him something that slowed him down, dulled his reactions. So when he went into the Talon fight, it was a pretty sure bet he was going to lose. I mean, personally, I'd say that means that you did kill him. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. But she says they did it because Batman was a threat to their rule of Gotham. And he, he was just collateral damage. Basically a nobody. He was just in the way. Which really is the most believable and understandable thing she said. I completely agree. Give me one good reason I shouldn't kill you right now. I can't. Well, seems like a simple decision then. You know what to do, mate. If you can't give me a reason, I don't know why I should try and come up with one. But at that moment, dun dun dun, the Court of Owls appear. And he's got a gun, and he wanted to take down the Court of Owls. Call me crazy, but this seems like a great opportunity. Miss Clark has always spoken very highly of you. You could just fire. This would solve all of your problems. Yes, maybe they're wearing John Wick suits. Let's find out first, shall we? We have misjudged you, Mr. Hayes. Yes, it turns out they actually really like the way that he responded. Sure, you were collateral damage at first, but look how you've thrived. Would you like to join us? All we require is a simple token of your loyalty. You've proven to be quite formidable, as well as resilient. Okay, love, you're laying that on a bit thick. If you want to make it believable, at least stick to the truth. We're four episodes in. The only thing formidable and resilient around here is the audience's patience. So him and his mask 
offer him a deal. All you have to do is swear fealty to us and we will give you power. The charges will be dropped, your name will be cleared, and you will become a prince of Gotham. You killed my father. You destroyed my life. You expect me to forget that? No, I expect you to pull the trigger. My only question is, why haven't you? You've got them at your beck and call. You can do whatever you want to them. These people are fools. They've walked into this room and asked you to join them. They are at your mercy. And for some reason, you're not doing anything. The only words out of your mouth should be fire everything. And they fly now. And just let you get away with it? You are letting them get away with it. What do you think you're doing right now? The court will get away with it. Well, they will if you don't pull that pissing trigger, mate. No matter what you do or don't do. Not if he actually pulls the trigger, unless you're going to go, these people were all paid actors. They're actually not anything to do with the owls. They're just a physical representation of them. And even if you had fired, they were meaningless people. I mean, at least then it would have been part of the story. At least then we would have get to see this guy's dark side. Instead, he decides to do nothing to the people that have killed his father. How can I trust you to honor your word? Of course you can't trust them to honor their word. The fact that you're still breathing is all the proof you need. That literally shows nothing because you want him to do something and he hasn't done it yet. He's asking, how can I trust you when I've given you everything that you've asked for? How can I trust you to keep your word when I'm no longer the one in control? Control. So they say, if you want to join us, you're gonna have to give up your friends. Where are they? Tell us where we can find the three remaining fugitives. You're asking me to betray them? Of course he's asking you to betray them. How else could what he just said be interpreted? If that's what someone replied to me as when I was in his position, I would withdraw the offer immediately. Sorry, I seem to have misjudged you. I didn't realize I was talking to a wet sponge. It's the only way to save your life. You have underestimated the power of the dark side. Then it's not a life worth saving. Based economy. But once, mate, I think we can all agree with you. And with that, he's like, well, okay, if that's your answer, well, I've got one of my own. I did bring my friend with me, just in case you said no, and he will be more than happy to give you what you want. At that point, this guy suddenly realizes, oh yeah, I'm holding this. For a while, I thought she'd set him up and she'd loaded it with blanks or something. No, he just decided, I'm not gonna do anything with this. And even now, he's not gonna do anything to them, the people responsible. No, instead, he's gonna take it out on Talon. Thing is, Talon is bulletproof. So every time he fires, does absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, the Court of Owls run out of the room and his chance to do anything to them has gone. Welcome to the most terrible superhero in all of Gotham. I present to you, Bat Boy. Because the bullets do absolutely nothing to Talon until the lights go out. And Robin makes her entrance, although I feel that would have been a little less dignified if that had been a double glazed window. She would have just gone splat on the side of it like, well, a Robin. Don't worry though, she's still got the LEDs and the goggles and she's ready to rumble with all the heroism you would expect from Robin. Yeah, just run away, mate, it'll be fine. Don't stand and fight. It, you'll definitely lose and I'll lose because I'm awful. So she drops a flashbang on the floor and when it goes off, uses that as an excuse to run down to the back cave. Now remember, this is the back cave that the police specifically said, take everything into evidence. Bag and tag everything. And there wasn't much there to begin with. So it is weird then when they never took the back computer. And I know what you're thinking. There's no computer here. Yes, but there wasn't to begin with. That was my entire point back in the day. If there was any cable running to this computer at all, there was no computer before and there's no computer now. There was never anything else in this cave. This is identical. We left all the monitors, the desk, all the hardware. What did they actually take? That's what I want to know at this point. And they're about to have a fight. Follow her. She's got LEDs blinding her in her eyes. This will definitely be good. So they run off down a handy side passage, which we've never seen before. He comes along and decides to stand in the entrance to the cave. She shoots a bolt and I'm just going to show you what happens. Why? She fires the first bolt. He deflects it. It goes up. No explosion. So she fires a second one and the second one explodes. Why did the second one explode and the first one didn't? I'm so confused. You could have just fired one bolt and showed the explosion. You're overcomplicating your own work and making it not make any sense. But that does cause a load of polystyrene blocks to fall down from the roof and block off that section of tunnel so they escape. Back to the Tower of Bat Boy. And so now we've got to discuss Bat Boy's feelings. Playing the last 10 years over and over in my head. That would explain why you're useless at everything. You don't actually learn or concentrate on anything new. You're too busy thinking about that McDonald's you had last week. We get to hear all about his Fifi's. Oh, Cressida betrayed me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't care. The owls are in the house. It was a warning. I'm sorry, but what did you think it was? What did you think the owls are in the house meant apart from 
The owls are in the house. Why are we talking about this is some really complex and sudden emotional reveal that nobody could have thought of before. Call me crazy, but when your granddad said the owls are in the house, I thought it meant the owls were in his house. I know people say if you stand out from the crowd, it's probably your fault. I'm like, no, everybody in this show is insane. I'm the only sane one. Alan Wayne said it and Pericles Jones. Yeah, it's almost like it was a pattern and obvious right from the very first episode. The court was in my house. This isn't the big reveal you think it is, mate. And I was too blind to see it. If we had to sit here and list everything you're too stupid to realize, we'd gotta be here a while. My dad too. Batman wasn't too stupid to realize it. Batman got killed because he realized it. The only thing is here is how far you've fallen from the tree. Uh, not okay, Stephanie. Look, you've been in a CW show for four hours. Nobody's okay. The audience isn't okay. At, at this point, these videos are simply a coping mechanism. We're just like, this is awful in a trash can and it's burning. Point and laugh. I had it in my head I could go back to my old life. Then I could go home. How could I be so wrong? Because you're human. Every time they go through these emotion scenes, I just think they're talking about their own career. I thought I could go back to how it was after I finished this show. And now I've realized I'll never go back. It's too late. It's on my CV forever. Every time. Anybody would want that. But anyone would want this thing taken off the CV. She was the last piece of family I had left. That was my agent that left me after she saw the ratings. That doesn't mean you're alone. You still have me. Oh, love, he's having a bad time. He doesn't need you to pile on more problems with him. My life's horrible. Don't worry. You've always got me. That makes it worse. If you really want to help someone where they're down, have you considered leaving the room? This is the part where you're supposed to make me feel better. See, I'm so glad he agrees. Hey, I'm working with what I got. Don't we all love? I have to make videos out of this thing. Can you imagine how I feel? We're all just doing the best with the material available at this point. So then, as we seem to get in every episode, we get her talking about somebody's privilege. I am just as smart and just as capable as her. That is not the high-level brag you think it is, love. If you want that to be complimentary, have you considered choosing anyone else? But she got born into a better zip code and has everything I ever wanted. Privilege, everybody! Oh, it's the postcode lottery. She was just born wealthy, and I'm so oppressed by her! Have Having money for some reason. Nobody has quite worked out how her being born into a place somehow damages you, but apparently in this show, no, if we're not equal, we're oppressed. Well, you get judged for who you are and not where you are. Okay, you want me to judge you based off who you are? Well, you're a thief. Somebody that breaks into buildings and takes other people's property. And I'm supposed to be what, complimentary of you? No, I'll judge you on who you are. That's the problem. As for judging you on where you are, admittedly, you are in Gotham Knights, so I don't really think that's a fair comparison. Although even then, I'm judging everyone individually. I still like Joker's daughter and Granny. Luckily for you, I know who you are. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Everyone should surround themselves with people who just tell you how amazing you are all of the time, even when you don't deserve it. No, she's not amazing. She's a thief. And the person you're gonna be, off the frickin' charts. Lifetime in prison. Definitely gonna get caught. Locked up forever. Congratulations, I'm sure it's gonna be a fun time. Don't judge her the way others judge us. Oh no, I think he's talking about me. We're gonna end an episode by look, everyone judges this show. There's a guy who sits here and goes through everything we do and just takes the piss for 40 minutes. I'll have you know, you're never gonna judge yourselves on the show like I judge you. <laughs> Certainly not as long as you all go around telling each other how amazing you all are. Back to the GCPD now, and they're locking into the mayor's car. They can't find fingerprints or DNA. I don't see any pry marks. I'm not sure whether you were expecting to find many clothes stores inside of a car, but that was probably unlikely at best. You know how the farmer got inside? Look, if he didn't break into this car through a pry mark, I have no idea how he got in. There is a key unaccounted for. That is the grand mystery of this entire scene. Do we know how he got into the car? Well, he probably used the keyhole. It is an unusual method of entry, we'll give you that. But of course, there's a key missing, and he found a key earlier in the episode, after he'd blacked out and can't even remember anything. And she says with a key missing, if we found that key, it'll probably lead us to the killer. And so as she takes a phone call, he suddenly realizes what's going on. And he takes out the key that he found, tries it in the lock, and it opens. Dun dun dun. Meanwhile, from somewhere, Joker's daughter has magically found a suitcase with one of Granny's music boxes in it. Turns out she stole it, although I have no idea how. She didn't take a suitcase with her, and she wasn't carrying anything when she left. How did she steal a music box? Don't worry about that, though. Because Robin appears, and she wants to dust it for fingerprints. I don't mind that you've stolen it. It's now useful, and that makes it okay. And she says, I can't believe that her murderous father gave her music boxes when all mine gave me was a playing card. What do you want to bet that later on that playing card actually turns out to be useful in some way, eh? So they dust it for prints, and we cut to the Court of Owls. The surrounding Talon, who's been rather crushed under all the rocks. It's not really surprising, polystyrene is renowned for being incredibly heavy when it falls on you. But at that moment, his body starts to reform and pop back into action. He's regenerating. They scan the fingerprints into the database, and get confirmation that Talon is indeed the original knife thrower from a hundred years ago. How on earth could this be the case? And that's the mystery for the episode, where Whereas my mystery is, 
Why was that an episode? <laughs> Seriously, it's no wonder that an hour after this episode, I completely forgot what happened in it. Because I went through and like, there was lots of weird lines, there was lots of stupidity and lots of feelings. And the most stupid part of the plot is obviously forgetting that you've used a poison blade to eat food with. And apparently he suffered no consequences from it, even though you really should have done. I don't know whether that's going to come up in a later episode, because they made a big deal out of it. It doesn't seem like it, though. Because otherwise, somebody really should have realised it by now. Don't you realise that these people are geniuses? Literal geniuses. Well, you have to forgive me if I'm not impressed, both by your IQ, by your mystery, and by your inability to work anything out. In fact, the biggest clue throughout this entire episode was discovered by complete accident when a knife landed on the floor. So no Gotham Knights, this wasn't a good mystery, nor was it a good plot, and... The only real benefit that came out of it is that you found Granny, who actually can act. So what can I say? Unless you're going to make her one of your main characters, you're probably going to lose one of the strengths of this episode. Because I tell you what, the strength of the episode was definitely not the script writing. Well, those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, bye bye